Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. Today's video is a big one. It's one of the videos that I've been the most excited and anxious to film because I am sharing with you the best eyeshadow palettes that I tried in 2021. I've rounded it up into a nice number of 14. <laughs> Maybe not that nice, but I just picked my favorites, the best of the best, and these are what they came out to be. Don't be mad at me, I'm not ranking them. Do you want me to go crazy? I could not rank them. But I'm gonna organize these by alphabetical order. If you're new here, um, <laughs> eyeshadow palettes are like my main gig here on YouTube. They're my favorite items to review, my favorite makeup item to collect, and every single month of the year, I go through all of the eyeshadow palettes that I've tried and I rank them and I've tried well over well over 100 palettes. I don't have the final number yet, but I'll give that to you in a later video. But we got it down to 14 eyeshadow palettes. These have not let me down. I'm kind of obsessed with these. So if you wanna see them, then just keep watching. Like I said, not ranked just by alphabetical order of the brand and believe it or not ABH had a couple that have um, knocked my socks off this year. So the first one that I have is the ABH Norvina Volume 5. Especially when this first came out I could not stop raving about this phenomenal eyeshadow palette. So let me preface this. If you don't know, purple eyeshadows, that's kind of what I'm most attracted to. Those are the color stories that I'm going to wear the most. And you will see that in this video, I'm not gonna lie, but not only is this just the most perfect purple palette ever, but the quality is spot on. I have not come across a dud in this palette. I've created so many purple looks and the colors that aren't purple, they perfectly complement purple tones. I know a lot of you got to pick this up for a really great discount during the Black Friday sales, and I must say I'm so excited for you that you get to experience this eyeshadow palette. If you have at all any attraction to purple eyeshadow palettes, this one is definitely a must-have. They killed it with this. I personally really enjoy these ABH Norvina palettes. I think they are great quality with great color stories for the most part. So this one did not let me down. It was one of my favorites this year, one of my go-to purple palettes when I knew I wanted to wear purple. I also have another ABH palette. This I truly did not expect to be in this video, but I like love this palette, you guys. This is the ABH Primrose palette, and I almost didn't even pick this up, but I want to use it all the time. This is, for me, the ideal everyday eyeshadow palette. I love the options that they have in here. I love that there's rosier options, purple options, neutral options, golden options. It's just an amazing everyday palette. Again, if you like the kind of tones that I wear, this, for me, brings it all together. The shimmers are really nice, really thick and creamy and reflective. I think they killed it with this palette, honestly. I know some of us were not really expecting this, and honestly, I didn't think it looked that interesting, but trust me, when you see this baby in person, you will see what I'm talking about. It's one of those palettes where you just have to see it in person to really understand, because online, she looks boring. But the quality on this is superb. The shimmers are extremely reflective, and I just love the colors that she chose. So for me, this is the ideal everyday palette. So I had to put it in here. Phenomenal release from ABH. Okay, let's get into Charlotte Tilbury. That's the next brand that we have. Have a couple from her as well. So first, unfortunately, this one is no longer available. So if you know, you know already. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Fire Rose. Now, <laughs> if you tuned into my live last streak, you saw a complete devastation happen. This guy popped out. So I'm gonna keep her flat for now, but this really is Charlotte Tilbury's best quad that she's ever come out with. The formula on this took 20 steps up, I swear. The shimmer in here is so reflective. The best pop formula she's ever done. It's not even a pop. It's just, it's the whole show, okay? It's the most beautiful shimmer shade. The matte is extremely pigmented and rich, but still blendable. The s'more satin shade is this beautiful, it, everything about this palette is perfect. And Charlotte, you, my friend, you are real mean. 
You are leaving us in devastation that this quad is discontinued. I know you're playing with our emotions. You better come out with it again because why the heck was this palette so amazing? So good. Anyways, let's stop talking about it because you can't get it anymore. But let's talk about the one that you can get a hold of. This came out in the holiday collection and I feel like it's totally underrated at how perfect this palette is. So this is the Celestial Pearl Luxury Palette of Pearls. First of all, if you get it, you get some super cute, super chic, luxurious packaging. I absolutely love this packaging. And I wasn't even excited about this palette, you guys. I thought it wasn't going to show up. This palette, or quad I should say, gives you the most ethereal, glowy look on your eye. Completely embodies what Charlotte Tilbury is as a brand. The glowiness that you get from this is unreal. You can get a little bit of definition, but this quad is not about definition. It's for an all over awake, glowy kind of look. So don't buy this palette thinking you want a lot of depth or range in the shades. This is not about that. This quad is going to gift you the most open-eyed, pretty, soft, luxurious, ethereal Charlotte Tilbury glow. So for that, I love this. I think it's underrated. It is so beautiful, you guys. I have literally a few videos where I use this because the look is just so perfect. I do have a quince from Dior. This did not come out this year, but I tried it later in the year. I happened to pick it up. My favorite neutral color story. So this is from Dior. This is from their permanent quince line. Just a forewarning when it comes to Dior, please be wary of their limited edition collections when there's quince in there. Sometimes the formula is fine, don't get me wrong, but those tend to be inconsistent. If you're going to shell out the money, you need to check out their permanent quint line because all of those have an unreal formula. They are so rich and creamy and soft and blendable. But anyways, let's get into what I love. So this is soft cashmere. In terms of the more wearable neutral looks, I love these neutral tones because they are more on the neutral side. I love the taupey lid shade that we have, the dark chocolate brown, unreal you guys. So dark but blends out so easily. This is like prime luxury formula you guys. The finish on the lid looks so elegant and these tones... If you have brown eyes or blue eyes, oh my goodness, you will die with this. So if you are also into those more neutral kind of brownie tones, I really think you would enjoy this. The application is impeccable. I really wish Dior would change their packaging though, but what is inside is fantastic. The next palette that I have is from Huda Beauty. This is her newest palette and she killed it with this one. This is the Rose Quartz palette. I mean, first of all, this packaging, absolutely stunning. And I love the purpley mauve tones, so I couldn't not put this one in. I've said this multiple times before. When I look at this, is this my favorite Huda palette? Probably not, but it's definitely the one that I'm most inclined to reach for because it's within my color story. I wish there was a few more touches and opportunities for depth, but nonetheless, every single look that I've come up with is just so pretty. I mean, I don't know. I just look at this palette and it's so pretty. I know the Mercury Retrograde, if you have that, you probably don't need this, but I don't regret it. Naughty Nudes, which is the one that came out last year, complete different vibe, really warm, really rich. This one is a total 180. It's about the lighter, more pastel-y, mauve purple looks. Anyways, I think Huda did a really good job with this. The formula is beautiful and it really is the color story and the options of all the textures and shimmers that stands out to me about this. So I've been loving this. It definitely is one of my favorites, mostly due to the color story, but quality is really nice as well. The next palette I have, I certainly was not at all expecting to be in this video, but within the last couple of months that I've tried it, it's become one of my most used palettes for every day. I can't stop reaching for it. The quality is really nice. This is from Melt Cosmetics. This is the Brunette palette and it is boring. Buying this was totally an afterthought. I bought it months after it released. 
and it literally set in my makeup bin of palettes to try for months before I finally bit the bullet to try it. Once I tried it, could not put it down. The quality of these mattes, oh my gosh, right? Can you get more boring than this? Probably not, but it's just so perfect for every day. Even though you see me wearing these crazy colors or this crazy makeup for work, at the end of the day off camera, these are the kind of colors that your girl just loves to grab for for a thoughtless, beautiful look. So the mattes are extremely blend. I love how dark this shade brunette can get. The shimmers aren't perfect. These two are fine. It's this stout shade that you kind of do need to dig into a little bit, put in a little extra elbow grease, you know, but it's so dimensional on the lid that it gets made up for. So it's not the perfect palette, but oh, the mattes are so good in here. And then you finish it off with one of these shimmers. Great everyday palette. It's become one of my most grabbed for. I've been leaving it out on my desk because even if I'm not using this, a lot of times I'll just come in and grab like a transition shade or cream shade for my underbrow highlight. It's perfect. It wouldn't be a top video without a Natasha Denona palette and boy did she kill it. This is definitely probably at least top three favorites of the year. This is the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. Again, it's another palette that's in those mommy bing tones, but look at this. There's some warm pops in here that are also really nice. I just love this palette. I love this color story. It makes me feel happy to open this. I love the looks that I've created with this. It's a not brown everyday palette for me. So the days when I'm not digging into my Melt Brunette palette or my Dior Soft Cashmere, if I want to lean more purpley but still quite wear I definitely go to this one. Was it what I was expecting for the retro palette? Nope. Was definitely predicting other color stories, but I do love the one she came up with though. While I wish it had a different name, I don't care. I do love what's inside and it's great Natasha Denona quality. This is my favorite layout and price point of the palettes. The best size, best value. <sighs> she did it with this one. I love this one. Okay, so let's talk about what is actually on my eyes because, oh my gosh, it's 20 times more pretty in person and I know it already looks good on camera. So I'm counting these as one because I can't, I can't pick between them and I kind of categorize them together. But this is the Odin's Eye Legendary Diversa Collection. I keep talking about these because these palettes are just so inspiring to me. I've created some bomb looks with the Red Dragon palette, which was in collaboration with Judy. Today, I mixed two palettes, and these two palettes in particular go really well together. So we have the Hummingbird palette, which was in collaboration with Tina over at the Fancy Face. This looks quite bright. Even I was like, ooh. But it's been so great to grab a few colors here and there to put all over the lip. The shining star on my eyelid right now is this shade right here, which is fancy. This is a multi-chrome, you guys. What a great value. The other palette that I use on my eyes today is Giant Wolves, which is a collaboration with Annette's Makeup Corner. I feel like if I were to create a palette, it would have come out similar to this. I love the purples, the blues, the greens, the shimmers in here are insane. I have a little bit of skull on my outer corner right now. I played with these purples. I used a little bit of the black. I've done some fun looks with the greens. Anyways, I've mixed and matched these palettes all the time and every single time that I use any of these palettes, it's such a good time. I feel so inspired and I still feel like I'm not done with these palettes yet. There's so many other looks that I want to create with these. And Odin's I did a phenomenal job with the quality on these. This is their best quality by far. The mattes are so blendable, so easy to work with. The shimmers and textures in here are insane. I can't believe the price point that you were able to get these at. I know a couple of these palettes have already sold out and were discontinued, unfortunately. So Odin's Eye, please come out with more palettes like this. Please come out with this formula again. There is not a bad thing I can say about this collection. They were some of the best eyeshadow palettes that came out this year. Miss Patty Pat Pat! I mean, both Pat and Nat came out with quite a lot of palettes, so it was a challenge for me to kind of limit what I did there, but this 
kind of snuck up from behind. I didn't expect to love this as much as I do, but it's truly a beautiful quad. So this is the v Venus in Fleurs quad. I feel like this hit the back burner because it was at the time that Pat launched her blushes. And let's be real, that was, that was a big deal and they were really good, but... This is one of Pat's best quads, in my opinion. It reminds me a lot of the Fire Rose from Charlotte Tilbury, but it's still different. It's They're not the same. You have this beautiful, very multi-dimensional shade, a beautiful shimmer, a great classic champagne, and a nice kind of Swiss chocolate brown here. Extremely pigmented, very blendable. Really, really easy to create. A, not wearable, but just a seamless eye look that looks a lot more complicated to create than it actually was. The quality in here is prestige. It is so good, you guys. Underrated in my opinion. Not the most exciting tones, but super functional, super easy to use. Mm. Mm -hmm. Great for everyday life that I've been wearing it. And yeah. I gotta give it to the Hutopian palette. Uh, is it my favorite palette she's ever come out with? No, but the dang purple shimmers in here get me every, every time. I mean, this was our annual Mothership palette that we got, and I, it didn't disappoint me. <laughs> It's so good, you guys. Of course, right here, this is what I keep coming back to. It's so good. But you still get some really great tones here. Beautiful quality. Just a top-of-the-line formulation. One of the best formulations you're going to come across on the makeup market, in my humble opinion. So she only launched one. So you know it had to be in this video. We even have a multi-chrome in here. Her delicious shimmer shades. And let me tell ya, the looks that I've come up with with this palette have been absolutely stunning. It is a very easy palette for me to reach for for every day. It contains a lot of tones that I feel comfortable with. Not brown kind of neutral tones, but in terms of being a little bit extra without being boring, this is a good one to go to. Okay, this is a palette right here. I am so inspired by this palette. It is different. The quality is phenomenal. This is the It's Freaking Bats palette. This is a collaboration with Butte Bean and Shroud Cosmetics. This was very hard to get a hold of, let me tell you guys. But this color story, purples, greens, these blues, oh my gosh, this palette's disgustingly beautiful. It is so fun. This is not like any other palette that I own in my collection. These shimmers will run a mile down your arm. They are such high quality. The mattes are like so pigmented, I have to be careful. It's an adventure every time I use this palette in the best way possible because I'm, it's not outside of my comfort zone, but it's just so unique. Every single look I do with this, it's insane. Both parties, Butte Bean and Shroud Cosmetics, absolutely killed it with this palette. I hope they collaborate again because Betty Jean, whatever is working and happening in your mind up there to create a color story like this, I just know I need more. I need more from you. Let's Let's make this happen, please. <laughs> okay, lastly, I have two final palettes from my beloved Vizzy Arts. So we'll start off with... I guess the OG. Now, I didn't want to pull out the one that's in my makeup kit right now. So this is the older one that I keep for myself, but the Grande Pro palette. So they came out with a volume 1X. So it's a revamped version. So it's a little bit different than the one I currently have in my hands, but they virtually are the same. So if you don't know, I am a bridal makeup artist. I use this in my kit. I use this on about 95% of the brides that I have because Hello, perfect bridal tones in here. This formula, it's unbeatable, truly. There's a reason why Viseart is so popular in the pro community. Such a reliable formula. So easy to blend, layer, mix. You can really customize shades with this palette because of all that is offered to you. It's my most physically used palette of 2021 because I've used it on multiple clients in one sitting and I use it for myself all the time. This dusty one is mine. I grab for it all the time whenever I need a certain shade. I don't think that this palette is for everybody. It's definitely more pricey and definitely caters more so towards professionals, but 
if you want it, I'm not going to discourage you from getting it because it's even been a great asset in my personal collection. I reach for it all the time and Viseart just has the most solid, solid matte formula in these. And the last palette, this is a newer one, but it's it, it's in that color story, you know? It's one of my favorite pur purpley mauve color stories, leaning more cool. And it's in a Viseart formula, so it had to be mentioned. This is the Kashmiri palette, and how cute is this packaging? Oh my gosh, you guys, starting from their fall launches, Viseart has launched about seven palettes, and every single launch, they've knocked my socks off. This palette, I absolutely love. If you actually kind of cover this half, you'll see you have a very more neutrally toned palette, and then you cover this half, you have something a little bit more mauvey and rosy. I absolutely love this curation. It is genius. Uh, the mattes in here make total sense. They make it so easy to create a look. The shimmers are absolutely beautiful. I, I'm gonna hold it up just for reference. To the Natasha Denona Retro palette and you'll see these really aren't as similar as you think. The Retro I think almost leans more warm when you put them together so they are more different than you would expect them to be. I've done side by side swatches. I didn't think they were really dupes for each other or if you had one you didn't need the other but I also love how much smaller this is as well so it's great for travel. Vizier, you're killing it. Absolutely killing it favorite palettes this year. But anyways, there we have it. Those were all of my favorite eyeshadow palettes that I tried in the year 2021. It was a very competitive year. There were lots of good palettes. I'm in heaven. Okay, I'm surrounded by my eyeshadow palettes. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. As always, I want to know what your favorite palettes that you tried were in the year 2021. You can give me a long list. I don't care. Do you agree with what I have? I mean, every single palette on this table, I am like, you are perfect. They are perfect. So anyways, I've like completed Vlogmas, you guys. I am so proud of myself, but I hope you guys are enjoying your holidays and your break off of work, hopefully. Thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.